And we're going to highlight some key dates in 2023. So some things for everybody to look forward to, for us to look forward to in terms of coverage coming up next year. And it's going to, it's coming up pretty, pretty quick. I mean, soccer never sleeps, right? So let's start with January 2023. Things are going to get kicked off on the United States women's soccer side of things with the annual January camp. It's going to take place in New Zealand and cap off with two friendlies against the World Cup co-host January 17th through the 20th. So that's very exciting. A six-day mm-hmm. training camp is going to take place. We're likely going to get a uh, training camp roster that drops. I'm very, very excited to kick off the year with that. I love this as well because this is also the first time the U.S. women's national team will be playing matches in New Zealand. And they're also playing at two of the stadiums where uh, the World Cup group stages will be played for this U.S. team. So this is huge. This is a really big milestone for the team. And it it is literally around the corner because we're doing this at the end of 2022. Um, And I like that this is – I think this sets the tone for 2023, that this is how the year starts off with this U.S. January camp um, in New Zealand. And the dates for us in the States, the 17th and the 20th for the two games, but the 18th and the 21st, if you're in Australia or excuse me, in New Zealand and in that time frame uh, watching these, but it, it's, it's pretty quick. The year starts off pretty quick because we've also got the NWSL draft that is in two weeks time, January 12th on Thursday in Philadelphia at the Philadelphia Convention Center. Um, We'll be covering it, everything you need to know here on Attacking Third. We'll be doing mock drafts, preview drafts, and we'll also be talking about the draft live as it's happening. Stay tuned for so much more about that. But we get to see the new crop of rookies and players coming into the NWSL this year with 12 teams. There's only one draft because last year we had the two expansion expansion draft and then the college draft, but only one this year. Um, and that's starting January 12th on Thursday. Uh, so we get to see these new players. I'm really excited about that. We just reflected on the, all the rookies from 2022 and to get a glimpse at who some of these new players are, what teams they'll be going to, who wants them, all the trades that'll be happening. I mean, the draft is a long day, but I'm excited for it. It's a very high bar. I mean, we we closed yeah. out that NWSL year in review talking, like highlighting that rookie class because there were so many. It's like, yes, they're at the end of the year when it comes down to those individual awards, there's only three finalists who are, you know, up for the the potential to to, to nab that award. And it went to Naomi Girma, but you could go through every single club. Mm-hmm in 2022 and point out and pluck out all of the rookies who had an impact for their team during that 2022 season. Uh, So the bar is very, very high. I think for, for 2023, Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see um, what that looks like or who comes out of, out of the draft. I mean, the, the league already released the preliminary list of of players who have already declared themselves eligible and and have registered uh, for the, for the draft around 90 players or so. It's and we're all anticipating that that might grow a little bit as as the draft uh, deadline comes a little bit closer. But even just amongst these 90 uh, ish players for now, just you could sort of take a look at some of the names across this list and kind of see like players who who are, are sticking out. Mm-hmm. We, we see a couple of uh, NCAA championship runners up in in, yeah. in Reina Reyes, Riley Mattingly Parker, um, TCU's Messiah Bright is is a standout amongst uh, some of the forwards here. Um, Santa Clara's uh, Izzy Diaquila is, is someone to, to take a look at. So obviously, like you pointed out, two weeks away, it's going to be here uh, sooner, sooner than we expect. So everyone's going to want to stay tuned for everything that we've got in the works there. And after the draft comes and goes, that that means the end of result preseason is going to be on the horizon and uh, could be opening as early as January 23rd with some players, you know, with opting to, you know, report in. And the uh, FA Women's Super League will also return to play for the remainder of their uh, season. That's going to begin on January 14th and 15th, taking a bit of a, of a break right now for for the holidays. So we'll see women's super league back in action in January as well. Uh, so January setting the tone for an equally exciting February. And in, in my opinion, I mean, I think right next to the world cup this month is probably the, the window that I have my eye on the most February 
is going to have the She Believes Cup. United States Women's National Team will host Canada, Brazil, Japan, February 16th through the 22nd. Yeah, this is huge. I mean, the when this was announced for the She Believes Cup as to the teams that would be playing and competing in this, uh, we really couldn't have wished for better competition um, for the United States and for all of these clubs. Uh, these games will be played in February uh, 16th to the 22nd, as you mentioned, in Frisco, Texas, Exploria Stadium in Orlando. Um, but ahead of this, also, we get a roster as well, which is very cool. So on the heels of the January camp, then we get to see in action kind of what's going to happen in the She Believes Cup. There's a, a lot on the line here for these teams to play against this really good, tough competition. Um, I mean, Japan, Brazil, Canada, the United States, if you're not going to these games as a fan, um, look to get tickets and try to go, especially if it's in your area. And of course, you can always watch them on TV and we'll be here talking about it as well and attacking there. But this is this sets the tone, right? We're we're in a World Cup year and January camp is like a little dip toe in the water for the US and, and the competition. But then the She Believes Cup, I think we'll see a lot of what's going to be reflected of this team in the World Cup. It's really our first big glimpse of like competitive competition that there's a trophy on the line and these games matter just a little bit more than a friendly because it is a tournament and there is more to come from the She Believes Cup. Um, I mean, yeah, mid-February, this is, is going to be exciting. I'm with you. I think, obviously, we're going to be keeping a close eye on the She Believes Cup during this time in February. We're going to get a chance to really probably get a look at – you know, some players who are likely going to be named to that World Cup roster. More on that uh, later in the episode. But um, February is going to be a very, very interesting window. It's it's one that I've got, again, that I've got my eye on. Because similar to what we went through in 2022, where we were talking about the summer of soccer, where we had all of these tournaments that we kind of had our eye on while we were specifically covering CONCACAF W Championship, for me, February is going to be like that last kind of glimpse into some of these, um, you know, national teams where they'll get the opportunity to kind of go head to head in these kind of round robin style tournaments yeah. during this month. So it's not just going to be She Believes, right? We're going to see the return of the Arnold Clark Cup. We're going to see the return of the Tournoi de France where, you know, for, uh, the French uh, women's national team is going to go ahead and, and host, uh, you know, I know that Australia typically hosts a, a cup of nations as well. I believe that is going to return. Uh, and within this, we're going to get that February inter-confederation playoff. And that is going to determine the three final teams for uh, the Women's World Cup, including one of the following teams for Group E with the United States Women's National Team, either Portugal, Thailand, or Cameroon, will join that team as well. So there's going to be a lot happening <laughs> in this February window, so you do not want to miss it. Like I said, January is going to kick things off, and February is going to make sure that we stay on our toes because there's also going to be a Women's Champions League playoff draw on February 10th. Everybody's getting in on the action during the February window. March, we're only three months into this timeline for, for key dates, and we've already got so much stuff that we're talking that we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, the NWSL regular season will be kicking off in March. March 25th is going to be match day one for the NWSL, but there's also the Conti Cup that will be taking place in March for the FA Women's Super League, and the Women's Champions League quarterfinals will also be played in March on the 21st, 22nd, and the second legs on the 29th and 30th. Yeah, I I mean, it's such a quick start. We're only in March. Um, there's some people in our chat right now giving shout outs to them. Uh, Beach Dog Scout, I think. January Friendlies, February She Believes, March NWSL. It's going to be a busy year. Can't wait. Uh, we concur because that's exactly it. With the NWSL regular se season starting March 25th, it's different this year. As, as the league put out the framework, it's not the Challenge Cup being a preseason tournament um, to kind of – kick off the year and then roll into the regular season. We're starting with regular season competition. So I think that's going to change about how these teams head into that first weekend because there are three points on the line. And not that 
clubs and individuals thought of challenge cup as like this preseason tournament, but it was almost like, Hey, don't show all your cards right at once, right off the bat. So I, I think that the stakes are a little bit higher starting with a regular season game in late March. Um, I, I know that that's really exciting to see because then just a month later in April is when the challenge cup will start. And it's a different format this year because it's going to be a six week tournament um, from April to September. These games probably played midweek, but it's going to be throughout the regular season that this is happening in the challenge cup, which I think it's, it's more of like champions league esque tournament throughout the regular season. And I'm really excited to see how it unfolds because that, that's coming uh, just a few weeks after the start of the regular season. Um, as everything is is in full swing, we've also got Women's Champions League happening throughout April. Uh, that'll be the semifinals. They start on the 22nd. Uh, they go for two weekends until April 30th. So the competition, right, like it, it's continuously getting more and more on people's plates to watch to attend for these players because it's all gearing up for the world cup that's to come in the summer but um yeah i mean those are big ones challenge cup and then march 25th for the regular season yeah i'm with you uh look it's going to be the fourth edition of, of the challenge cup and it's it's evolving mm -hmm. once more from how it got its start in 2020 as a kind of a one-off tournament uh in light of the uh the the ongoing pandemic and it, uh, it's going to be interesting to sort of see how this version of it where it kind of runs concurrent to the actual regular season and how that's going to play off and how how coaches are going to utilize those windows of time when you perhaps have players missing or unavailable and and which players are going to get uh, get a chance to impress during some of these uh, challenge cup fixtures so i'm excited to see it for sure it's going to be a good build up into may for the women's super league and I'm excited for for this because it's it's the final women's super league match day that that mm -hmm. typically happens in in May. It's going to be match day 22 out of 22, kicking things off on May 28th. And listen, uh, if last year was a little you know indicative of, of what some of the madness that that we could see on on final match day for for women's super league, I'm I'm all for that. Uh, yeah, a repeat of that maybe this year um for for women's super league i know obviously you've got chelsea as, as the front runners and um they're so stacked with with all the talent that they've got uh, across uh, across the roster but um you know we'll see if, if there's any sort of moves that take place during the uh the upcoming january window that could sort of bolster up other uh you know rosters across uh, clubs in Super League, and, and we'll get to see what kind of final run that we have all leading all the way down to May. See if it'll come down to, to Chelsea and Arsenal once more. Oh, I like that. I like that bet you got here, Sandra, uh, putting, putting some names on it. Um, but I mean, May 28th, like it's that's an exciting time. I love watching uh, the Super League like come to a close and, and kind of everything that has happened so far. Look, I mean, look, Arsenal, they just missed out on, I know. on claiming the title last season. We're talking about a, it came down to a point, you know, whole match with Chelsea. So um, hopefully it'll it'll be, you know, equally as exciting. We'll see. We, we've got uh, we've got some time um, until then, but we'll see. Uh, if, if that happens, but uh, that may will roll us into June. And there's some, there's some things that I think could potentially happen in June that we don't have, you know, concrete confirmed dates on. We do know that June 3rd will be the women's champions league final, but June also has some interesting question marks around it because there is an international window uh, in June, one final one, I think before mm -hmm. uh, a big old tournament called the World Cup comes around in, in January. So I'm a little curious if, if we will see this international window utilized as perhaps a bit of a farewell for the United States women's national team. So will the roster have been announced at this point for uh, the United States women's national team ahead of the World Cup? And will it sort of revolve around in an international window? We, we don't have that confirmation just yet, but it's fun to speculate in terms of the potential big dates in front of us. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, this is one that we have to put on our calendar. Everyone just kind of keep an eye out in June for that final international window, because that's when we'll get really a sense of of who will be going to Australia and New Zealand. I mean, we'll, we'll probably be able to pick up on some things as the year goes on, whether it's the January camp, she believes the other friendlies that'll be happening for the U.S. But um, this is that's the big one in June. And if it's anything like the Men's World Cup and their roster reveal and everything that happened, there were some surprises. There were some question marks heading into it. There were a lot of players that people were surprised to see. So uh, depending on how players return, right, that's also something that will be happening in these first six months of 2023. We have the potential return of a lot of U.S. internationals that have been out due to injury um, or even Crystal Dunn out on maternity leave that will hopefully be getting more and more minutes coming back into things. So the roster could look entirely different different from January to June when we could potentially see the World Cup roster drop. Um, And that's just the first six months of the year. We haven't even gotten to the World Cup yet. (laughs) 